Hi, I'm Matt, the owner of Exo Racing, and today we're going to show you what heat reflective tape is and why you need it. So you've probably seen in the past gold and silver reflective tape on different websites and builds, and in this guide we're going to go over everything that you need to know about them. So heat reflective tape was designed to keep radiant heat away from parts that aren't going to be exposed to excessive temperatures. So you might have seen heat reflective tape being used on air intake pipes and intercooler piping in like race car applications. So today we're going to go over multiple parts to do with gold and silver reflective, um, what it's made of, where it's used and why you need it. So the first section we're going to go into is how reflective is actually made. Um, so it's got top foil, it's got adhesive and it has like a reinforcement layer underneath. So the tape can usually hold up to about 450 degrees with intermittent spikes of up to 1100. So it's great for intercooler piping and anything automotive based. Also, depending on which one you use, it can reflect up to 80 or 90% of radiant heat. So we're going to start with the top layer of this. Um, it's normally a metallic film that's laminated over the top. Uh, it's the same for gold and silver, although the gold can generally reflect a little bit more heat. It can normally do about 90%, whereas the silver does about 80. So most reflective tapes have a fiberglass or glass cloth backing, and this is to actually reinforce the tape and make it way more durable. So this extra strength actually helps it stay in place. Uh, it conforms around everything correctly and is great for like really harsh environments. So the last part of this is the adhesive. Uh, the adhesive is actually incredibly strong and a lot of it is silicon based. So it sticks to pipes and it just stays there for a really long time. The difficulty with this is actually trying to get it off because it's so strong. Um, but yeah, the adhesive is the last part of it and that makes up the entire foil. So now we've covered how it's made, we're gonna go into why you actually need it. So the first part we're gonna talk about is protecting from heat damage. So heat causes a massive problem in loads of automotive applications and even outside of that, um, even in like home systems, aircraft, absolutely everything. So first point is protecting the parts. So if you have parts like intakes, uh, fuel lines, wiring, basically anything that can be exposed to heat or high amounts of heat, um, reflective tape is great at keeping all the radiant heat away from it. So for wiring specifically, um, although reflective tape is a great idea, um, the best thing that you could possibly use for it would either be Velcro heat sleeve or like silicon heat sleeve. Um, this will go directly over the line and just keeps it the best it can possibly be. I know this guide's about reflective tape, but it's worth mentioning here anyway. So we actually have a story here about one of my customers and how they decide to use heat reflective tape and silicon fire sleeve combined and how it massively helped their installation. So they actually were installing electric heaters in the house and there was a lot of wiring that went between the, I think it was between the heater and the wall and they were worried about the heat kind of trapping in that area and melting the wiring because I had in the past. So what they ended up doing was getting silicon heat sleeve over the wire, putting reflective tape down the side of, or both ends of it, um, and it ended up just reflecting the heat away and they haven't had any problems since. So, I mean, for that, it's kind of perfect. Even though it's not automotive, um, it still helps and it can still do exactly the same job, just in a different application. So next on the list is going to be performance improvement. And this is where most of our customers actually need it. So a lot of our customers are going to be installing it on air intake pipes or intercooler piping. And what this does is keep the radiant heat away from it and reduces the intake air temperatures. So the colder the air going into the engine, the better, the better bang you'll get in the combustion cylinder. And overall, it's just going to make easier to make more power. So the lower the air intake temperatures, the more power you can generally make. This is why in drag applications, they'll run like ice chambers or something like that to try and bring the temperatures like sub-zero or under ambient, should I say. And I know obviously road application isn't gonna be the same as that, but in essence, it works the same. The colder you can get the air intake, the better off you're gonna be and the more power you can potentially make. So there aren't a lot of situations where installing gold or silver reflector is gonna be a bad thing. Um, anything that can improve performance, bear in mind this stuff isn't even really that expensive, is always gonna be positive. So the next thing on the list is preventing or reducing heat soak. So heat soak is where hot engine parts make everything around it hotter. And in these kind of situations, that's a bad thing. So if you've got an engine that's like 100 degrees, for example, your intake pipe slowly is gonna start going up and up and up. Um, it's never really gonna reach 100 degrees, but it will just keep going. And the more heat you can keep away from the intake pipe, the better. So in terms of heat soak, uh, you're way better off running something on it or at least trying to pull it down. I guess this is where all heat management comes in as a whole. So you've got a hot manifold, for example, and downpipe, which will be the hottest parts of it. If you've got exhaust wrap on there, turbo blanket, you've got reflective on the intake, you're kind of trying to push everything away and keep everything at its own point. And in which case the heat soak will be the minimum it can be. 
So that will increase the, um, or decrease, sorry, the intake air temps. And again, you're gonna be better off in terms of power. So the best example of this would be an air intake. So for example, if you've got it in your engine bay that's like next to the gearbox or engine versus like a cold air intake that's down by the bump somewhere, the one in the engine bay is gonna heat soak way more um, because the air is gonna be drawn in from there, which is gonna be hotter. If it's down by the bump somewhere or somewhere where there's a cold air feed to it, for example, it's gonna pull as much cold air in as possible. So this helps in combined with location. You get both together and you've got a great location for it as well as heat management, then you're gonna be way better off. So depending on how long you followed us, uh, we've actually got an all-wheel drive Civic build that I'll put up here, just in case you wanna see it. Um, we turboed it probably five, six years ago now, and we were always struggling with temperatures on that. So we ended up wrapping the intake pipe, we were running exhaust wrap on it, which we kind of went on and off as we were kind of testing throughout the years. Um, overall, the best temperature we had when we got to the dyno was when we had reflective on the intake. Um, the in intake temps were just over ambient, and yeah, it was basically not heat soaking, or it was, but not a huge amount. Um, so yeah, even in our own Civic, it was great. We haven't actually done like a full back-to-back -back test yet, but we are gonna be doing that with like a thermal imaging camera so we can show the exact drop in temperatures and intake temps and all that kind of stuff. But that's why we went with the Howtech on the Civic so we can add as many sensors as possible, get them as accurate as possible, and we can data log and kind of save everything. So data-wise should be absolutely perfect. Um, probably won't be for another six weeks or so, but as soon as we get the car back and we can start testing these things, it's gonna be great. So we're gonna go through and test basically every single part of heat management. We're gonna do like exhaust wrap, blankets, um, Velcro sleeve, silicon sleeve, reflective, the whole lot. So yeah, make sure you're following for that one because we will be bringing that out in a couple of weeks time. Six weeks time, six to eight weeks time, around there somewhere. Who knows? Who knows when I get my car back? <laughs> right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is gold versus silver reflective. So a lot of people would think that Gold is massively better than silver, but in reality, it's probably between a five to 10% difference. Um, if you're in a road car, I doubt you would even see the difference. It would be so marginal, but again, at like high horsepower drag cars at like 1500 plus, the five to 10% is kind of scales way higher. So it is, there is a little bit of a difference in it, but for the sake of what most people want, it's normally just the color they want in their engine bay, whether like the gold would suit it or silver suit it better. I've personally always gone with gold and gold does have like a slightly higher um, way of being able to reflect it. But again, if everything in your engine base silver, you want to stick with silver, the performance benefit, unless like I said, you're in a massively high horsepower situation, um, you can generally just go with the one you want. So the next one is where to actually install it. Um, I've been over this a couple of times in the video already with like intakes and uh, intercooler piping, but there's so many different applications you can use it for. It's not even just automotive. Um, if it is automotive, you can use, like I've said, air intake, intercooler piping, um, on intercoolers, basically lit anywhere where air's gonna be going to heat things up. Um, I said a minute ago about our customer with the electric heaters. Again, that massively helped him in that situation. You've got aerospace where like they're trying to keep wiring and everything else protected from like huge heat and pretty much any application, providing this tape will actually stick to it and there is a benefit of using it, then you know, you're good to use it. Um, one thing to note though is that this, because of how it's designed, it won't stick to like powder coated intakes or anything. It does have to be, I think it's porous, non-porous, non-porous intakes it needs to fit to. So something like this, that's like solid aluminium is great for it. But if you're gonna go with something powder coated or you know, something that, that isn't just completely shiny and yeah, you won't be able to fill it. So I just wanted to quickly go over the difference between the sheeting and the rolls. Um, they are essentially exactly the same. The only difference is this comes in a massive sheet. So I'm just gonna quickly chop this open just so you can have a look. Um, so the sheeting is great for if you're gonna do like bulkheads, for example, if you're trying to keep the cabin colder, because um, a lot of the time the heat will actually go through the cabin. Um, we've also newly introduced our heat reflective installation kit. So we've got microfibers and squeegees in there. Again, you can get all of this on the website. I'll put the link in the description below. Um, but the sheeting comes in a meter by 1.2. So absolutely massive and it's great for doing bulkheads um, or anything that's like a huge area for like the underneath of a bonnet. Um, the fact that you get squeegee with it is quite good now because you can install it quite easily. I'm just gonna chop this open as well so you can have a look. Pew, 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 pew. So have a nice sticker there, how exciting. Um, bit of packaging. But yeah, if you're going to install it, um, 
quite easy with a squeegee. You can just push everything out, get it installed nice and easy. And again, we've got microfibers with nice little extra racing logo for if you're needing to clean it beforehand. So all of this now comes free with the reflective. And yeah, if you do need any, we do have it on the website. Again, links in the description below. Uh, the next thing on the list is how to install it. So we actually have a video installing it on this pipe here. Um, I'm gonna link it up above just so you can have a look up here somewhere. I think it's here, isn't it? This far over? Here? Around there somewhere. Um, we'll put it up above anyway, and we also have a blog on it. Um, there's no point in rehashing that in this video because we kind of covered everything we could in the last one. So yeah, we're not gonna go over how to install it, but if you want to, click the video and that'll show you everything in terms of like how to cut it, how to get like no creases and everything else. So conclusion out of this entire video, um, heat reflective tape is great if you're trying to reduce intake air temps, if you're trying to protect components, or if you just want something to look shiny. Um, it's relatively lightweight and it's really easy to install as well, as long as you follow the video. So in terms of which one you use, um, gold or silver, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, the gold will reflect a little bit more, but depending on application, you may or may not need to, and depending on your engine bay. So again, totally up to you. Um, thank you all for watching the video. And if you've enjoyed it or learned anything, then let us know in the comments. Uh, please make sure to subscribe to the channel because we're gonna have loads more video, including the testing of this as well, and all the other heat management products. And we'll catch you in the next one.